Hey, what's up guys? So I was just making some edits to my website, uh, doing a little spell checking, fixing up a few things and uh, kind of went on a little tangent and decided I wanted to add in a little feature to codewithsteps.com. So uh, if you look at the screen here, right now I have each step and I decided that it would be really cool to provide a video link right here that tells us exactly where in the video, where in the YouTube video, we were at this step. So if this was at, let's say, uh, like six minutes, we'd be able to just click on it right here or at least see the timestamp and then refer back to the steps. What I'm gonna do first is build in the template. So I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll actually go in and we have to add a few attributes to my database. So we have a model called steps right here. So we need to add a timestamp, a URL for the YouTube link and I'll show you what that looks like. And that's right here. So let's say this is video one of that project. And if I want a user to be able to open up this video exactly at this timestamp, we need to add this and symbol right here with a T equals, and then we have to convert it into seconds. So anytime we're going and sharing this video, we can always send it to somebody and add in a timestamp like that, copy that, and then they'll see it. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of conversion, make sure that the seconds or the timestamp gets converted into seconds and then we'll work with that. So let's go ahead and start with our, um, with our template here. So I'm gonna open up my project and because this is a live project, I am gonna, um, I'm not gonna reveal too much. I'll try to show and explain as much as I can, but uh, it does leave me a little bit vulnerable by showing you this. So I'm just gonna code along and then just try to explain what I can. So let's go ahead and get started. And this section right here is my header. So I'm looping through all the steps in the database for this particular part and I have a header. So within this header, I'm gonna use a flex box and we'll add the timestamp to the right. So the template looks good right now. I just have the timestamp with an icon. And if you look at these, it's a hard coded value. So we're just going to 2050 or yeah, 20 minutes and 52 seconds. And we don't actually link out anywhere. So I'll show you what the template looks like right now. And right here, I just added a link right here, threw in an image into that link. So I threw this in my static files. We have a play button.png and that timestamp. So for the actual wrapper, we have this wrapper around those two elements and here's the link and the text here. So we just used a flex box. We did flex justify content and then we did space between and we aligned those items vertically. So everything looks good for the layout. Now what I need to do is actually go to the database and add a few attributes to my models and then run a migration and we'll start working on that conversion of this timestamp right here into seconds. So here's my model structure. I'll make sure to just move around a few items here. So in my models, I have a step model right here. And the step model is a child to a part model, which is what you're seeing in the sidebar. So we have that relationship and a part is always a part of a module. So I'll uh, pull up a little diagram that I just drew. And in this diagram, I'll just show you what that relationship looks like. So within the module, each module represents a timestamp. If you've been following my series or uh, not a timestamp, but a certain video in a playlist. So we have the module and what we're going to do is just add the link to that video for the module, but we don't want to add that extension of the timestamp yet. So we're just going to put the link to the video and that module has a relationship to a part. So what we're going to have to do is within our step here, we're going to have to create the timestamp within uh, we're actually gonna have to create our timestamp within the timestamp attribute and we're gonna have to run this conversion and add it to the seconds attribute. So that's where our versions are, our calculation is gonna be run. And finally, we need to run a calculation that takes that timestamp and adds it to the link. And this video link will actually query up to my part here and then query up to the video link module. So let's go ahead and just build that in really quick. I'm gonna run a few migrations and see how it works. So I just made these three attributes right here, character fields. Uh, it's okay if they're just text. So this is gonna be the timestamp. This is gonna be the only value that uh, I'm gonna add to the database. And then these two will be dynamic. So 
let's go ahead and just take video link and I'm gonna go up to module model here and I'm gonna throw in the video link. So we threw video link into the module and remember that part is a child of module. So we're gonna query up that chain and we can run the migration. So I'm working with a live database. This makes me a little bit nervous to run this migration, but we'll just see how it goes. And if anything goes wrong, I should be able to fix it pretty fast because it's not too big of a website. Okay, so the migration ran well. We added the fields and now I just wanna migrate it. So normally what I would do in this part is actually create a production level database and a development database and run the migrations to the development database and make sure that it all works. But uh, just for the sake of the video, I didn't wanna have to go through that testing. So I just ran it straight to the live database from localhost here and uh, it is connected to an AWS database. So it looks like everything ran correctly. Um, let's hope the website didn't crash yet and we'll just continue fixing this. So I do have my own admin panel, but because of the time frame with this project, I haven't really done too much with it. So uh, right now I'm still working with the default Django admin panel. And if we go to our steps here, I just wanna add a few timestamps. So let's go to, let's say step one, install Django. So it's the very first step in my database. And in here, what I wanna do is figure out where in the video I talked about uh, installing Django. So let's go to that section. We'll go to module one, part one, step one. And I wanna set this timestamp and then make that dynamic. So let's go back to my video and then I'll just find that really quick and we'll add that in. So if you're uh, completely new to Django. So it was at 449 and now we have that timestamp attribute. So I'm gonna say 449. And the way that I'm gonna run the calculation, I need to make sure that I also add in the hours. So we're gonna do 00449, and that should be enough for now. So we're gonna save that, and I am gonna take video one and link it up to that module. So this is the step. Remember, video link is gonna be dynamic. So if I go back, and I will take the full link to video number one, and I can copy that without the timestamp. So once I have that, I can go to my modules here and go to module one and add that. So now the video link goes to the module. That looks good, we'll save that. We have the timestamp. So now in our template, we can actually make these values dynamic. So right now they're just gonna render out each timestamp. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we go, we have that timestamp and we can just do step.timestamp. And for that link, that's gonna be linked up to this video link right here. So we can do step.video link and then uh, we'll create it later. So step.video link. So when we clicked on that link, it didn't take us anywhere because we don't have that video link. So for that, what I wanna do is actually go to my signals. And in signals, I'm gonna create a signal that is gonna create that timestamp and convert it and then actually set it whenever a step is saved. I actually found this conversion right here on GitHub. So I'll zoom in here. And I just did a search for how to convert a timestamp like this. So an hour, minutes, and seconds value, and then turn that into seconds. So this function right here, it just grabs those values right here. So whatever we throw into it, splits it by this colon. It's gonna split it and then it's gonna set H to the hour. So to one right here, the M to the minute, and S for seconds. And then we're gonna take H and we're gonna multiply that by 3,600. So there's 3,600 seconds in a minute or uh, within an hour. So we're gonna multiply that and then we're gonna add it to 60 seconds in a minute. And then we're just gonna take whatever our seconds value is. So we're gonna get this value within seconds. So that's what we're trying to do. And once that is set, we'll throw that into here and then we'll also make that video link. Okay, that was fun. So I just spent the last 10 minutes trying to figure out why pre-save wouldn't work. And apparently pre-save can't take, take in created. So uh, I'll have to look that up, but um, we had to do pre-save because we needed to make sure that this value actually gets added. So now our link is the same as the module link. So what we need to do is add in this extension right here. So I need to create the function the one from the GitHub repository, and then we're just gonna add in and t equals, and then 
the converted seconds. So what I'm gonna do is actually just paste in this function because it makes perfect sense and uh, I'll make sure the indentation's right. So it looks like a pretty easy function to write. And I'm gonna put that above my signal. So, so that looks good. So remember, we're just grabbing each value that we throw into get sec right here and we need to convert it. So what I'm gonna do is set the value. So I'm gonna say seconds and that's gonna be equal to instance dot timestamp. So we need to take the timestamp. Once we have that, we need to throw seconds into get sec right here. So we'll throw that in, we'll trigger it. And then once we convert that, we need to set the value of instance dot seconds to that timestamp. So whatever the value of seconds is. So we're gonna take this value right here, we're gonna convert it, and then whatever the return value of this is, should be sent to seconds. And then once we do that, we need to go ahead and append it again to that full link. So let's make sure this works. So it's gonna take this timestamp and convert it into seconds. So let's try that, let's make sure everything's working. And that should be converted now. So let's see that, 289 seconds. So if we take this link, we're gonna paste it in here and let's look at the formula here. So we'll say, go to share. So we just need to do question mark T equals and the seconds value. So what we need to do now, once that's converted, before we actually uh, set this video link attribute, what I'm gonna do is finish off that value. So it's question mark T equals, and then we're gonna take the seconds here and we are gonna convert that. So we're gonna concatenate it, but we first need to make sure it's a string value. We need to throw in instance.second. So we need to throw in the new value. So it's actually uh, converted into seconds without the minute value. So if I save that, and now if I refresh it, it should show up with the seconds to value. And I'll refresh the page here so we can actually test it. So now we're seeing that link 289 and we also threw that link into our template. So we're calling step.video link, which now is updated to the link. And with our signals, we went ahead and added the question mark T equals, and then that 289 seconds there. So that's a dynamic value. So now if I click on this link right here, and let's say I'm at step one, um, I just wanna confirm something that I am seeing in the video or in the steps, I can either just see the value or be taken to that point in time and see exactly what I was saying at that point in the video. So there we go, we're taken to 449. I'm at that part right where I'm talking about uh, running the pip install. So uh, all I need to do now is go ahead and update all of these values in my templates or in the database. And this project, once I push it live, should have all the video links. So it's gonna take me a little bit of time to, uh, to update those values, but um, I'm really curious to see if that feature is gonna work. One of the things that I was thinking about doing was adding in comments to each section. So if you guys have a comment in a certain part, um, I was wondering if it would be helpful if I can just give you guys the ability to ask a question in that section, see what everyone else is asking and uh, actually dissect what you're working on. So you're not asking a comment in the general YouTube section, but this way I can see if a certain step maybe uh, needs more explanation. Maybe I can change up how I'm showing it. Um, but let me know if you guys wanna see that. I think that'd be something cool to, uh, to put in here, but that's episode number three. So I hope you guys enjoyed it.